Welcome to the Hair of the Dog podcast. I'm Nicole Bagley, and today we are talking with Andrew Helmich about how to use video to book more clients. This is a good one. You're going to want to stick around. Welcome to the Hair of the Dog podcast. If you're a pet photographer ready to make more money and start living a life by your design, you've come to the right place. And now, your host, pet photographer, travel addict, chocolate martini connoisseur, Nicole Begley. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Hair of the Dog podcast. I'm Nicole Bagley, and I am so excited that you are here with us again. I can't believe we are almost done with 2020. Who is with me that they are ready to say goodbye, 2020? Hello, 2021. So today's podcast is going to be a great way to start your 2021 with some new ways to incorporate video into your business. Now, before you say, oh my gosh, Nicole, I don't want to be in video. No way. No way. Keep that video away from me. I like to be behind the camera, not in front of it. Well, got news for you. You guys, we run personal brands. We need to be the face of our business. And to do that, we need to be in front of the camera sometimes. And the best way to book more clients is to make a connection with those clients. And we're getting to the point where getting people from your website onto the phone, which has been kind of the best way to convert people for quite a long time in the photography industry, is becoming more and more challenging. People are busy. People don't want to stop to pick up the phone. People don't want to commit to coming in for a consultation without knowing all the details. But using video is a great way to bridge that gap, to make that connection, to help more inquiries, take more steps with your business and get them to take that next step of meeting you or talking to you so that you can book them in as a client. Now, we're not just talking inquiries, even though that is super helpful (laughs) and something we all can use, especially heading into a new year. We're also talking about how to use video in a numerous other ways that will help you grow your business from outreach to other potential partner businesses that you might want to co-market with to social media, to YouTube, to SEO. Really, we're covering it all in this podcast. So you definitely want to stick around. And actually, you really, really, really want to stick around to the end because Andrew is super generous and is giving away five spots to something really awesome. I don't want to let the cat out of the bag now. You're going to have to stick around till the end to find out, but you can win a seat, one of five, and it's going to be awesome and you're going to love it. So stay tuned and enjoy. Hey everybody, Nicole here from Hair of the Dog, and I have a super special guest with me all the way from Australia. I have Andrew Helmich from Photo Biz Exposed with us. So welcome, Andrew, to the Hair of the Dog podcast. Hey, Nicole. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to do this. Yay! Yeah, yeah, me too. I'm super excited to have you here. And today we're going to be talking a little bit about video and how how awesome that is to start to work into our business and the benefits. But before we dive into that, Andrew, tell us a little bit about you, where you're from, what you do, all that good stuff, just in case people haven't heard of you yet. Sure, sure. So yeah, I'm an uh, Australian-based wedding and portrait photographer. I've been in business for over 20 years with my wife, Linda. Um, We've had two studios at one stage, multiple shooters, and um, we've sort of brought it back to more a home-based business now. And uh, I started Photo Biz X, which is an interview-based business-focused podcast for photographers was about seven years ago. We're up to episode, I think, 350 something. And uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I love what I get to do. And uh, yeah, talking to people like you, you've been on the show as well. And yeah. Uh, yeah, hearing hearing some great business advice and sharing that with listeners. So, yeah. We'll have to link that up into the podcast. And I know you just had uh, my good friend Craig on recently from New Zealand, yeah. um, Craig Turner Bullock. Yeah. And uh, all sorts of good stuff on that podcast. So you guys definitely want to check that out for sure. But yeah, let's talk a little bit about video. Like, I guess, what are the the benefits of video? Why, why do us as photographers even care about video, especially when we're saying um, we should be on the video and everyone's hiding under their desk right now? Yeah. So just to be 100% clear, the videos that we're talking about is actually getting the photographer, the listener on video, talking to their prospective client. And uh, I think already some people are like, whoa, that's way too scary. Uh, Most photographers like being behind the camera. But I think what we're all striving to do as photographers and people in business is to get known in our local area, be seen as the local expert photographer or dog or pet photographer, and and to make a connection with our clients. And, and what I do find, Nicole, and I'm sure you found the same thing, is 
once we actually get in front of a client, that's when we make a connection. Usually that's when the client books. That's when we, you know, we have a great time in the session, the sale goes well, but it's, it's just that initial connection. We need to get that happening, I guess, faster or uh, more quickly than, I don't want to say our competitors, but other dog photographers. Let's be the mm-hmm. first person to make that connection. Yeah. I just mentioned this really quick before we started and it comes up here. It's just like the, I think the biggest pain point for most boutique photography businesses right now, because we know like, hey, you don't want to just plaster your prices all over your website. You want people to call you. You want to get in touch with them. You want to explain your value and all that stuff. But getting people on the phone in 2020, even though we're all working from home, is harder than ever, but so important. So this little video option becomes such an incredible way to start to make that connection in a way that, you know, that that we just really need to because then people start to make that connection with you and then getting them on the phone becomes a heck of a lot easier to to move forward to hopefully book your services. Yeah, I, I agree 100%. And like as a primarily a wedding photographer for the 20 years, I, like I said, I found that once I had the couple in front of me, there was a connection, mm-hmm. you know, we could relate, they saw me and uh, they booked, you know, 99% yeah. of the time. So that's that's how that yeah that say that happens for me too. If I can get a prospective client on the phone, or if I can get them to gosh, especially before the land of COVID, we would sometimes do a in person. I'd offer the uh, ability for them to come and and do an in person consultation prior. And if they did that, hundred percent booked. But getting them, even just getting them on the phone, has become I think so much harder than when I first started in business ten years ago. Just because yeah. people are so much busier. Yeah, and I always hear too from from younger photographers than me. And I'm not saying I'm old. But <laughs> so many younger photographers, are, they say they're almost afraid of the phone. They don't want to use the phone. Their yep. clients, they tell them, they tell me that their clients don't want to use the phone. So video like it is is the easiest way, the most relaxed way to get your face in front of the client, show off your personality, show off your smile, show off your humor if you have any, and um, and make a connection. It's super easy. Yeah, I love it. I love it. So for our listeners that are at home, like quaking in their boots right now, and maybe thinking like, oh man, I mean, my camera does video, but I don't even know where to start, which I don't know about you. But whenever I do Facebook Lives in my group or... Heck, even recorded videos for challenges and even some of my content in the Hair of the Dog Academy. I use this sucker right here, this phone. (laughs) (laughs) Because these these iPhones um, and any newer phone has a pretty decent camera on it. So are you, you know, recommending people use that? Do they have to set up like this whole big system? What do you recommend for creating some good video? The whole idea is this is really easy. So for me personally, I'm, I'm recording video email replies to, to subscribers, to client inquiries. I'm doing this daily. So it's got to be super easy. So phone is a great solution for me. An even easier solution is my webcam. So you can use the one on your laptop. Um, I'm using a a Logitech uh, HD webcam. They're not expensive. So I know that when I'm sitting at my desk here where I work and do my editing, uh, I can just click record and bang, the video's done. Uh, For me, and I do, I look, uh, total, uh, to be transparent here, I do have a nice video light next to me, which just fires into the white wall in front of me. So I've got some nice lighting on my face, but it's nothing expensive. It's not fancy. You don't need to have extra lighting, but you do want to be reasonably well lit and have good audio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I always tell people at least like just face the window. You're (laughs) fairly close to a decent window. You usually have some nice light on your face. I have no light on me right now because we are uh, having another uh, remnant from, oh my gosh, there's so been so many hurricanes that hit the Southeast United States this year and they just all like come up through here once they're done and now it's just rain. So it's just gray and yucky (laughs) out today, but that's okay. That's all right. We don't actually need this video because it's a podcast. (laughs) Um, So yeah, so where would maybe our uh, pet photographers think about starting or like what's an easy way to get started kind of give them some some tips there okay for sure so look i i would i would encourage any listener to to give email replies a try first 
you can, like you said, use your phone. If you do have a webcam, one of the easiest ways and, and the free ways to do this is to use a, a plugin, a Chrome plugin called Loom, which is free. Uh, you basically open the, a, a, a tab in your Chrome browser. You you click record, and the beauty of this is you can you can be full screen, or you can show people parts of your website if you want to show them something specific. Maybe it's a blog post that is uh, related to their breed of dog, to the location they want to photograph. So you don't have to be full screen if that totally scares you. But, but I would encourage you to put your face on the screen, click record and answer the email. And, and you don't yeah. need to go into a lot of detail. This is more of an introduction. You can, you can just have a 30 second to one minute video recording, introducing yourself and then include extra detail in the actual body of the email if you don't want to talk for too long because you want to keep these short and snappy. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, Loom is fantastic. It's L-O-O-M for any of you guys out there. And yeah, it's free. Your face is little in the corner if you have, you know, if you're screen sharing, so you don't have to be like all scared about that. (laughs) But yeah, it's a great thing. I know I've started doing that on some of my client inquiries when I get a client inquiry. I've been jumping on and um, recording a Loom video. And I kind of want to, I'm in the process of getting ready to redo my website because, you know, Cobbler's Children, my website, like I help so many other pet photographers with their websites, but my website is right now, like has not had any attention in quite some time. (laughs) So it needs, it needs a little love, but you know, I'm thinking of even building in like my, I have my welcome guide PDF. But like maybe I build on an extra little page of like some of those information that's a hidden page that I can go to that page when I do my inquiry and show them that and tell them what to expect and, you know, have a link to it so then they can go over it. But I feel like that might be a good way to just thinking off the cuff here. You know, if you're getting to the point, like maybe you even already had the inquiry guide, but then you're sending them a pricing guide. Because I know a lot of times like the most uncomfortable portrait photography situation is when you're in the sales room and they haven't looked at the pricing, right? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So we want to avoid that. So, you know, I always tell people to make sure you're talking about this at some point during the process, but, you know, making a little loom video of your pricing PDF, you can go through it and, you know, attach it to that email, but scroll through as you're t- explaining, oh, we talked about some wall art. Here's the different options. Just then there's so much more likely they're going to actually watch it. <laughs> exactly. And I, I I interviewed uh, Brian Bassani, who's a US-based photographer, and he he created a, a Loom video or a, a video, actually him going through his pricing page on his website, and uh, it's really cool. So he's showing them what each thing is, what, why it costs this, and, and where you can find certain things. It's, yeah, super simple, t- just like you're talking about, and he says it works extremely well. Nice, nice. Yeah. That's excellent. We'll have to, is it um, one of the podcast interviews you have on yeah. PhotoBiz? Awesome. Well, um, I'll get the link from you. We'll link it up in the show notes because cool. um, that sounds like a... That sounds like a good one. Can I can I just add a couple yeah. more things quickly to Please the email do. reply? Okay, with the email replies for the listener who wants to give this a go, the, the, the challenge, well, first of all, there's two other ways you can do, or a couple of other ways you can do this. If you want to use your phone, mobile phone, don't want to use a webcam, there's an app called Bonjoro, which oh, yeah. has a free trial. That's a really cool way. If, if you're really into using your mobile phone, that's probably the best app with a free trial to try, Bonjoro. And there's an app that I use, which is called BombBomb, now this is more for this is it's a more expensive app, but it's fantastic because what it does is when I send a, a video email reply, it embeds a GIF with me waving and um, saying hello. So it's like a, a little quick GIF, but it's showing me talking to the client. So what I do is I hold up a little a little sign, a little whiteboard with a name tag. It would say, "Hey Nicole." Oh, so, that's brilliant. Yeah. So you know this is a personalized video for you, and this is what I do for my clients. And uh, so there's a little gift with me waving and it's got a little whiteboard and it says, hey, Nicole, you click on that and then it plays the video, which is a personalized reply to your email inquiry. That works that really is well. Brilliant. I love the sign. Yeah. <laughs> so the, Just because then they know and they're sc- they see it in their email and they're like, oh, my gosh, this is this is for me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I just I just it's a little whiteboard here. I have a oh, nice and I just have. I'm showing Nicole for the listener. I know you can't see this and it's um, just a, a super simple, really quick, hey, Nicole, and I'm holding this up like this. And, That's fantastic. Uh, I'm waving. So that works really well. Now, with Loom, what you can do, you don't, you, it's, it's more difficult and, and too much of a hassle to make a GIF, but what you can do is um, hold the sign up and just grab a quick screenshot of your Loom video, embed that into your email reply and make that the link 
to the video because the no, challenge is we, we want people to open the email. Yes. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And then how much information are you putting much um, like copy and stuff in that email? Or are you going over most everything in your video um, or a little bit of both? It depends what the client has asked or the prospective client has asked in the email. So if it's just a general inquiry, it's, uh, you know, how much does it cost or, you know, what availability, what's the process? Yep. It's, it's for me, it's, hey, it's Andrew here from Impact Images. Awesome to get your inquiry, Nicole. Um, I love that you've got a schnauzer. We've got one too. And, you know, you wouldn't <laughs> believe this. I photographed a couple last week. I'm gonna, I'll am gonna i share a blog post to, to one of those um, shoots um, down below. I've got extra information in the in the copy. But look, I just wanted to put a, a face to an I'll have you put a face to a name. And um, yeah, look, I'm really excited to, to hear from you and looking forward to, to hopefully working with you. So something like oh, that's that. perfect. Yeah. Super quick. You can go into more detail, but you don't want to just drag on about pricing. This is more about making a connection. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Again, that being able to bridge that initial inquiry to make that connection makes them so much more likely to continue on in the process. Yeah. And I would say if when you're recording videos, wh whether it's an email reply or any other kind of video that we talk about, if you have a pet, and I'm guessing your listeners all do, um, <laughs> have your pet, pet, sorry, your dog or your cat or wh whatever animal, have them on your lap in the screen, or if they're distracting you, include them in the video. So yeah. it's, again, it, it helps me make a connection. I, I'm, I mean, for you, I, I know the listener can't see you, Nicole, but I'm looking at your background. I'm seeing you've got, looks like books and DVDs up there and um, a, a, on the bookshelf. I've You've got a sailing boat. Yep. So I'm making these little connections by what's happening in the in the screen. So we want to do that with our prospective clients. Oh, I love it. I love it. Awesome. So that's definitely a great way to use this for inquiries. So get working on that, guys. What are some other ways that we can use video? Well, I think social media is, is an easy one. Same as Facebook ads uh, and on your website, like you talked about. Some a couple of ways that people might not have considered is it's it's like we all we, we know about or we've talked about in the past. Not maybe not you and I specifically, Nicole, about third party marketing and getting referred mm -hmm. by other vendors. Mm -hmm. So one of the ways you can do or utilize video is to leave testimonials for other vendors that you would like to be working with to, to become known by to have them refer you. So let's say you you go to photograph this this uh, pet owner with a schnauzer and the schnauzer looks beautifully groomed and you ask about the groomer and you've never worked with a groomer but you know they're popular they have a lot of clients you'd love to connect with them so why not leave a create a video on your social media account saying that um, you just photographed this gorgeous schnauzer the groomer was such and such pet groomer and what an amazing job I've never seen a schnauzer that looks this good. And you post that that video linking to the, the dog groomer on your social media page. You also get in touch with the dog groomer, send them the video so they can see it and make sure they don't miss it. And yeah. um, it's just a great way. There is no way that if you receive a video like that from someone that you're not going to be remembered. They're not going to be referring you. They're not going to be checking out your website, your socials. Um, you that is brilliant. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. I think one of the other, so inquiries, maybe number one, like getting them to move forward. The next like biggest pain point that I think so many pet photographers have, and we know we want to do it is making connections with other pet businesses. And how brilliant is that? Because you, even if they're not a dog that usually gets groomed, you can ask like, oh, does he go to a doggy daycare? What dog trainer do you work with? And then it can be, oh, you know, like you can have fun with it and say, hey, Fluffy here. I'm here for my dog shoot. Just wanted to let you know, like I was a good boy because I was trained by so-and-so, you know, oh man, the possibilities are endless. And what a fun way to make connections. I've actually been finding that making connections with other businesses uh, through Instagram has been pretty, pretty easy, like an easier way than in the past to make connections with them. Certainly easier than like showing up and asking to speak to someone or cold calling. Mm -hmm. So this just takes it up quite a few notches. <laughs> and so we, everyone has their phone with them. You just put it on selfie mode, you start recording. I mean, you can be taking your dog to the vet. You could be at a pet supply store. You could be trying some new food. Like, There's so many ways you can use video to make connections with other business owners. So easy. I love it. I love it. Oh my gosh. Our listeners' heads are going to be exploding like mine. <laughs> what else? What else do you have on there? Okay. So let's let's touch on something that I was thinking about before we came on. I thought might be yeah. good for your specific listeners. 
And I think like every photographer, one, one of the biggest things I was trying to achieve as I was growing my business was getting known. So when someone thought of wedding photographer or portrait photographer, I want them to think of me and impact image. That was the aim. And, you know, back in the day, you could, we had a studio frontage on, on the, on one of the main streets. That was great, but it's so much easier now with, um, with our phones and using video. So what I thought was, I guess, along the lines of, uh, like personal projects, you could create a little project where you document the local dog parks. You could also go and talk to dog owners and talk about their breed of dog. Let's ask them, <laughs> would they buy the same breed again? Who would they recommend this breed for? Where do they where do they get their dog trained if they're really well trained? Just make these connections. If you create a little project on your Facebook page, but preferably also on your on your uh, website as blog posts to get people coming onto your website, not only do you get known by the person that you're talking to, they'll be they'll be sending other people to look at those videos. You can still shoot if you want to as well, but I think video is a much easier way to make a nice connection. Mm -hmm. And just treat that dog owner as the expert, asking them about their dog, why it's so special to them. You can ask them, share a quirky story. What's something crazy that your dog's done? What's something what's something naughty that your dog's done? We just want to make this connection and get people to our website, other dog owners, other pet owners to our website and to our social media page. Super easy as long as you yeah. them. And I think most dog owners that find it easy to approach other dog owners because you already have a dog. It's easy. Right. And everyone loves to talk about their dog. You know, we're not approaching people to be like, hey, tell me about your tax return last year. Let's talk about that. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> but, so would you would you see yourself, Nicole, if you're at a local dog park, would you go and talk to other dog owners? Yeah, yeah. I mean, my dog's super reactive, so she doesn't get to go play in the dog park. But 100%, anytime I'm around anyone that has a dog, we're, you know, quickly talking about their dog. So, yes. <laughs> yeah. And, and if the person doesn't want to be on video, you could just have yourself and their dog on video while you, yeah. while you grab their audio. Like, just tell me about your dog. And, yeah. Uh, you know, okay, um, who's the, um, I'm thinking of Brandon Stanton. What is it? Uh, was it the New York project? What's people of New York? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I mean, yeah. you could do it in your own town. You're, you know, yeah. dogs of such and such in your own town. And uh, anytime you see a dog owner, someone walking their dog, go and talk to them. And yeah. uh, create a, it could be a 30 second, it could be one minute, it could be a five minute video. You got great content. I love it. I love it. And for those of you guys, those introverts out there, they're like, oh my God, I had to go talk to someone. Wait, what? 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 A stranger? <laughs> I, can, I can hear them. I can hear them calling me, Andrew, and saying, no way. But you guys, you guys, we're talking about dogs and truly so many people. I mean, I used to be pretty nervous about jumping on the Facebook lives and doing those things. And now it's just like, boom, go. All right, I'll mess up at some point, whatever. It just gets so much easier. Just like when we were shooting, learning to shoot our cameras in manual, the first couple of times you're like, okay, wait, do I need, I need to add a shutter speed, wait, up or down. Okay. Then that means I need to adjust the ISO. Like you were thinking about it. Now mm -hmm. it's just second nature. So this is the same thing. It's just a new skill that just takes a little practice and you'll be yeah. super confident in it. And you know, and the best, ex exactly what you're saying is, is so true, Nicole. And the best thing about video is the little mix ups, the little stumbles, the interruptions, the, the, um, the, the way dogs might react, which, which might not be, uh, which might be unexpected. <laughs> they're, they're the things that are going to make your videos fun to watch. Right, so right. We, we want to see those things. Like, yeah, yeah. It makes you human because everyone's yeah. been in your same situation. And yeah, Zoe yeah. has definitely, yes, whenever the mailman comes or the UPS to deliver a package, there is always an interruption because she must protect the homestead. <laughs> Very loud. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's an, I mean, you could even talk to the postman when he comes, if he comes to the, and the dog's going nuts, go and have a quick chat yeah. to him and record a video with him. Hey, what's it like? What, what should we do as dog owners? If, if you know right, the right. <laughs> <laughs> there is, there was uh, last year, I think sometime they had, it was a Facebook page that went crazy. It was like UPS drivers and their favorite dogs. So it was like UPS drivers would take pictures of dogs on their route. And it was, oh my gosh, so fun. <laughs> so good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't think pet photographers really appreciate the gold mine of content that we're sitting on and the fact that no one is ever sick of sick animals, especially with everything going on in the world right now. Like more animals. We need to pull the more animal lever. Like it, it just makes everybody happy. <laughs> totally. Totally. I love it. I love it. That's fantastic. 
Um, um, you, sorry, yeah, and, go and ahead. You also said one other thing there too that you know people do get self conscious. Like I'm, I'm talking about the listener now who who is afraid to re- or thinking that they might be afraid to do video. One of the things when I started a podcast was I hated the sound of my own voice. But like you said, now you just hit record and I don't even hear it. I just just talk. (laughs) That's my voice. I can't change it. And those sort of things, the way you sound on video doesn't matter. Like no one, (laughs) you're fine. It just sounds strange to you. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, we are so much more critical to ourselves than anyone else. Like there's no one sitting there judging your video like, oh, I was going to book her services, but she messed up. She, you know, her dog interrupted or she forgot what she was saying. So forget it. Nope. Not calling her (laughs) like not going to happen. But I think that's what we build it up on our head Yeah, that all these people are going to be sitting here watching us, judging us. And if there is somebody that judges us, they're certainly not going to be our client, nor will they be a client that we want anyway. So exactly, get out there, put yourselves out there. They make you more relatable. So yeah. Yes. Embrace the mess ups. ups. Yes. (laughs) Yes. Yeah. (laughs) I mean, just think about how viral all the uh, like America's Funniest Home Videos, all the just silly home videos go. I mean, people love that stuff. So yeah, absolutely. don't try to be too perfect. No, that, that's not the idea of these videos. And and it's meant to be simple, easy, unedited, raw, just straight to the point, put it up there. Yeah. Yeah. And like you said, short and sweet. So we shouldn't like, you know, it's not going to be a 20 minute video we have to do. I mean, especially social media, like 30 seconds a minute. Yeah. Boom. Yeah. So that's all the attention span people have for anyway. Yeah. And and for anyone that's thinking, well, there's still no way I'd approach a stranger. Like if someone approached you and asked you about your dog, would you talk to them? Like the answer is yes, every time. And you probably light up at the idea of talking about your dog. Most right. people do. Yeah. Yeah. They're not yeah. asking you about you. <laughs> you talk about your dog. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, exactly. I love it. That's great. That's fantastic. Are there any other lists yeah. that you have there? Other ways that we can incorporate video? Their yeah, suggestions? Definitely. Yeah, definitely. Look, there's, there's a really simple, easy way that I, I tried this after hearing it from an interview that I did years ago. I'm still getting <laughs> I'm still getting inquiries because of these videos. So what I did was I went around to a local area of mine that is super popular for wedding photographer wedding photographers to go to for the location shoot. So for dog owners, this would be local, could be local dog parks, could be your local spots where you go to take photos. I know some people get worried about sharing their location. They think, oh, this is my secret location. But what I found is when I recorded this video or this series of videos, which I did in one afternoon, these spots became known as, oh, that, that's Andrew's spot now. Oh, that, <laughs> that, that, that image's spot. That's where Andrew does his photos. So yeah. don't be afraid to, to reveal your spots and show them off as, as great spots and share why they're a great spot. So let me give you an example. So down near me, we have a little coastal area, rocks, a little bay, and there's probably five or six different spots around that one area that are great for, for wedding photos on a wedding day. And they're all a little bit, one's a little bit better than the other, depending on the wind direction, um, the time of day, whether they're shade, open shade, full sunlight, depending on what, what I want to do on the wedding day. So all I did was grab my phone, put it in selfie mode and said, why each of these spots is great for different times of the day, different times of the year, different wind direction. So all of a sudden, someone searches Terry Haven wedding photography. You can still do that right now. I'll come yeah. up. I'll come up as the first post in Google. I'll, I'll rank number one, and it's it's four or five really bad YouTube videos of me when I first tried video like five or six years ago, <laughs> and they still work. And I'm now the expert for wedding photos at Terry Haven. That's I love the- it. I love it. And that is that a blog post on your website now? Well, no. So what I did, well, they are, but uh, they're yeah. also the YouTube video. And I would encourage anyone that wants to get more into video and wants to improve their SEO is to post their videos to YouTube. Doesn't matter if no one ever sees them, um, they will. But if if no one still sees them, you've still got links. You add links back to your website from those YouTube videos. And the secret is, or or the the big tip is to make sure that you use the full URL. So it's an actual hyperlink going back to your website. And it can go to the specific blog post. It can go to your dog page. It can go to your location page or it can go to your home. But you want to have links for every video going back to your website from YouTube. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. The, I was um, reading something the other day and uh, yeah, YouTube's the second biggest as a search engine, really. Yeah. So yeah, definitely. Google, so um, yeah, it's the, the more backlinks you can create pointing to your website, you become the authority. So mm-hmm. I became the authority of wedding photography at Terry Haven by just producing those videos one afternoon and they are dodgy. Like they don't look great. 
<laughs> my old <laughs> iPhone 4 or something. <laughs> and uh, they, they, they work really well. And the funny thing is I get inquiries from usually UK couples that are uh-huh. coming, coming back home to get married. So they're doing some <sighs> searches and I get an inquiry. Hey, I saw yeah. some photos at uh, Terrigal Haven. Nice. So for, for the listener, you could do local pets. Uh, do you have off-the-leash parks, off-the-leash areas, mm-hmm. beach where you can walk your dog or let your dog off the leash or run, dog parks. You can create video content like that super easy. You don't yeah. don't need your big SLR. It's just a phone and you saying why this is such a good spot. You can do, yeah, like best hikes with your dog in the area. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. I always think for my target market, it's usually young professionals. So, you know, the best dog friendly breweries or wineries in the area is always a popular topic too. So good. So imagine yeah, you, and, you walk in there with your dog, you record a little video in the brewery, yeah. having, a, having a beer or a wine or whatever you like. Yeah. 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 Great and then content. they they share it, you know, and yeah, I love that vendor idea because that is brilliant because you can tag them, give it to them, be like, hey, I was there. With, I, you know, took some pictures or so made a little video of some of your dog patrons today. Just wanted to share it with you. I'm sure they're going to put it up on their social media. And then all of a sudden, look, you're out to their social media as the pet photographer, you know, in the area. So yeah, brilliant. Brilliant. Exactly. And then and then so that's on their social media, it's on your social media, potentially a blog post. You put it on YouTube, you've got a link back to your website, all from this one or two minute video, you know? Yeah. So that you just film with your phone. Yep. Yep. I love it. I don't love need it. Sound equipment, don't need lighting, don't need a DSLR. I love it. That's fantastic. Yeah, it makes me think even maybe showing my age way back when I lived in Florida after college, I uh, was when the Blair Witch Project came out, that movie, and it was like intentionally all dodgy and crazy how it was filmed as if it was filmed as like these like kids in the woods and it was like one of the first like reality looking filming things. So, yeah, you can just stream your inner uh, <laughs> Blair Witch uh, director vibe and, and go get some dog photos <laughs> exactly yeah you don't need to have any fancy you know equipment to keep your phone super still you just hand hold it uh, yeah I, I will say i will say nicole this is really really bad the listener will not like this but a selfie <laughs> stick does does make <laughs> some of these videos a lot easier yeah and you feel like an absolute goose walking down the street <laughs> recording with a selfie right. stick. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Um, but they do make life a lot easier if you want to record some of these videos, particularly if you say in the dog park and you want to do like an interview type thing. Um, yeah. I wouldn't walk up with my selfie stick, but I would certainly <laughs> get the okay and then grab it to make it easier. <laughs> That's funny. I love it. I was going to say too, there's a lot of gimbals out there that if somebody wants to take their video up, up a notch or two, they're usually fairly affordable for, you know, for your phone which will just kind of move it. If you don't know what a gimbal is, it just kind of pans your phone pretty evenly. So, you know, I'm sure they have really fancy ones for Hollywood, but they have really easy <laughs> handheld ones for us. <laughs> yeah, and the, the ones today are amazing. I mean, they've, they've got vibration dampening. They keep everything super still and smooth. Like it looks really pro. But again, you do not need that to start with this. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. No, this is definitely extra credit if you're like, I love this video yeah. thing. This is so fun. And yeah. um, and you're really into it. Then then you can look into that. But definitely don't need it to get started. <laughs> awesome. Uh, gosh, there's so many, so many good things. Are there any other areas that people should consider maybe using some video? Yeah, look, I think there's a couple of other ones we can touch on. Definitely website. I mean, like you talked about having a thank you page after someone sends you a, a message using your contact form. Uh, it could even just be on your about page. And it doesn't, you know, if, if again, it should be with your pets. It should be showing your personality. Uh, it can show your home. But if you, now again, it depends a little bit on your, on your brand. So if you're going for high-end clients and your house is an absolute mess, then obviously you're not going to use your house in the background you're going to maybe get somewhere else to shoot but if your if your house your lifestyle the way you live your the way your pets looked after and looks matches with your ideal client then absolutely go for it like show us your kids show us your your husband or your wife your partner show us your dog your, the, the dog food brands that you're using let us into your life you know out walking the dog on the on the weekend or running the trails, whatever. If that's you, if you're a fitness buff and you're running with your dog through the trail, show us that. Mm-hmm. Let, us, let us into your life and, and connect with you if that's yeah. you, you're trying to attract. Yeah, because pretty much all of us, unless you're running a big giant photography studio, we're all personal brands. Exactly. So yeah, yeah people want to connect with us. Yeah. And, and, and just on the opposite side, if you prefer sitting on the lounge with your feet up and a 
you know, box of popcorn or chips and a, and a, and a, and a Coke or a beer. And you've got your dog cuddled up there on your tummy while you're watching the sport. Put that yep. in there too. Like, that's fine. Yeah. I'm going to relate Absolutely. to that. <laughs> yeah. You're like, oh man, I'm pretty jealous. That looks nice right now. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Let us into I love your life. It. The other way, I mean, we touched on social media, but I, I would definitely encourage people that are enjoying the videos or want to try them or become known as the local expert to to test out video ads on Facebook uh, mm-hmm. and potentially Instagram as well. This is one of the, if you're going to use video as an ad, I would use some, what I would call a dog whistle headline in my video ad. So you want to call out to your specific target audience. So, you know, if you're photographing, if you're doing a, uh, let's say a promo for long haired dogs, do you live in South Carolina? Do you have a long haired dog? that you absolutely adore? Are you up for some fun and adventure on the local trails? Okay, so now yeah. if I if I have a long-haired dog, I live in South Carolina and I'm up for some fun and adventure, I know that you're talking to me. I'm going to go on and watch the rest of that video. Mm-hmm. Anyone that yeah. watches a two or three or five-minute video, we know they're interested. And then we can go on to either retarget them or keep serving them extra ads, get them to our website and go from there. Make a connection. Yes, yes I love that. I love that. And one of the things you mentioned too about, it just popped in my head of other ideas that people at home can use for videos for social media is you have a new order coming in from clients. Instead of taking a picture of that, why don't you say, hey, you know, and tag your client and say, this just arrived. Look how beautiful this album block is, this wall pieces, this album, whatever it is. And instead of just taking a still picture of it, you can, you know, make connections that way. There's just so much. I mean, you can do a quick video of getting ready for your shoot tomorrow of just, I'm so excited to meet, you know, Fluffy and her mom. We're going to go to the park and do, you know, and just have a little 30 second with you packing your bag. Gosh, so many things. There's so many. And video, it's it's like everyone's got fast internet speeds these days. It's easy to record. They look great straight out of your phone. It's super simple to do. And everyone's looking for content. It's all around us. We all want mm-hmm. extra content. One of the things I hear from from photographers is, oh, I don't know what to blog about. It's like, oh, my God. You- <laughs> there's, right. there's, there's a million things. Just have a look at your emails. Any email that you've sent out answering a question, that's a blog. Uh-huh. You, you could record yeah. a video if you want to. Yeah, that's what I always tell people too, to, to brainstorm. Everything that your client needs to know before booking you should be a blog post. Yeah. Like, oh, my dog's hyper. That's a blog post. Like, take a video of you with your dog. I'll take Zoe outside. She's running around jumping and can't even see her. She's running so fast. You'd be like, hey, guess what? I can photograph dogs like this. No problem. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> uh, just, yeah, so many things. I love it. A lot of people, when they're thinking about blog posts, we know that Google is looking for actual copy. It's looking for text on the page. Mm -hmm. So if you find video super easy, and a lot of people do, then what you do is you send your video file over to rev, rev rev.com, and you can have it you can have it transcribed either by a, a human or you can have it done automatically. And there's other ways you can do this. If you have it done automatically by rev, it's super cheap. It's like it's less less than a couple of dollars. Then yeah. you, then you can just tidy up that copy and you have a blog post with a video. Okay. And I've Perfect. using that I've using that copy then on on your website. I'd probably change it up slightly and use it on YouTube as the mm-hmm. description because you're going to be naturally saying your keyword phrases while you actually record these videos. You know, so are you a, a trail running dog lover? Uh, who's based in South Carolina. So you've got your keywords in there just when you're talking to your, make creating your video, you're going to want to use all those keywords in your copy on your blog post in YouTube. I love it. Just brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a big believer too of just repurposing that content. You know, you create it once and then you have things that you said, you know, blog post, YouTube, social media, uh, Facebook ads. I mean, it can go to all of these places and it's one piece of content that you created. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. if you go around and record the local off-leash uh, dog areas in your in your local area, I mean, you've got, yeah, you've got so much content just from that one little topic. Yeah, yeah. and that's such a great thing too that you then come up on Google for people searching, not necessarily for pet photography because still in pet photography, people... How many times you say, hey, I'm a pet photographer. They're like, really? That's a thing? So that tells me there's still a lot of people that don't even know pet photography is a thing. So how many more people would want our services if they knew we existed? So if you have this blog post of the best hikes in the Charlotte area with your dog, the best dog friendly hikes in the Charlotte area, guess what? People are Googling that all day long. And I'm sure there's not a ton of um, articles already out there on that. So it probably wouldn't be that hard to rank on that first page. And then you have all of these new people 
coming to your website because you created this little blog post about something that they're searching for that they weren't necessarily looking for a pet photographer. But then all of a sudden they're like, oh, it's interesting, pet photography. Hmm. Exactly. Yeah. And then on that <laughs> same blog post, you would have some of your amazing photography yep. potentially photographed on that trail or another trail. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Like you don't have to overthink this. And uh, and you said something really interesting there, Nicole. You said there, there might not be a lot of competition for those search terms. Well, this is the really cool thing about video. So before I re- recorded my videos on Terrigal Haven wedding photography spots, there was other photographers ranking for those keywords. So I created the videos, put them on YouTube, and now Google shows them at the top of everything. Uh, uh-huh. People want to see video. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, think about it. When you search, you have your search results, but you also have video results now because yeah, yeah. Google has worked that YouTube in there because, well, it's all owned by Google. <laughs> yeah, that's right. They want, and they know their, their viewers want to see video. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I remember it was some crazy stat probably five years ago I read that was just the insane amount of like everything consumed online by like 2023 was going to be like almost all video. Like that's all people want is just video. (laughs) Exactly. Yeah, we haven't even mentioned TikTok. I I mean, I'm not on the platform. Are you on there? Do you use it? I'm not. I Well, I I sometimes download it and find that I get sucked in way too long. Like I have to take this off my phone. This is just dangerous. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. So I haven't, I don't have an account other than just to, to, you know, entertain myself for what should be five minutes and ends up being half an hour. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I mean, there's so many options out there. There's only going to be more, you know, in, in yeah. the future for video. Yeah, absolutely. Oh my gosh. I love this so much. So if there was one takeaway for our listeners out there, what would it be? Try email replies first because yep. it's it's the safest. You're only sending it to one person. It's not going out there to the whole world. And I think what the listener will find, if they do two or three of these, they will get feedback from the from the recipient and go, oh my God, I've never had an email like that. It's so good to put a face to a name. This is so mm-hmm. cool. And you think, wow, why haven't I been doing this for the last five years? So, I love it. Yeah. And that. so to do that, it would be Bonjoro or Loom would probably be the two easiest, right? Definitely the easiest. Yeah. Don't yeah. overthink it. It's really just a 30 second snippet to put a face to a name. Um, one, one really big tip is if you want to be smiling before you hit record. So the same way you've probably been taught and, and the way you know, Nicole, is when you pick up the phone to call a client, you're actually smiling before you answer the phone or before you actually get picked up. Um, yeah. Because it, 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 it transfers across through the phone and it's even more obvious on the video. So obviously, if you're not right. a smiler, you don't need to put on a big fake smile. Um, <laughs> but you, but you need be, to look happy. You know, exactly. Yep. <laughs> Your normal happy face. <laughs> That's right. And the other big thing is you want to have eye contact with the lens of the camera, whether it's your webcam or your phone. It's really tricky for a lot of people with the phone that aren't used to recording video. They tend to look at themselves on the screen. Mm-hmm. But as you put a post-it note over the screen, look at the lens. Lens, okay, because that's how you're going to be making eye contact. So, yeah. so if I was talking to you, Nicole, I'd be looking right at my webcam and recording this way instead of actually looking at you on my screen. Right. Absolutely. Yeah, those are great tips for sure. But yeah, to get people started, we have a little contest, don't we? We do. Yeah, giveaway. <laughs> <laughs> this is, a, I mean, who doesn't love a contest? <laughs> <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Let's do it. Go ahead and share. Yeah, so we're going to give away, I think I said five, five entries in the daily vlog challenge. So this is for your listeners, for you, the listener. So there's there's five chances to win this. All we need to see, and you can you can send these to Nicole, or we can we can work out how to do this afterwards. But I want to see proof that you've created three videos. So the first people, first five people to create three videos will get a free entry into the next daily vlog challenge. And um, if you're unaware of what that is, it's a challenge that I put on. It's a three week challenge, and um, we have the weekends off. I set you a small video task every single day that you can do with your phone. And we we lean this towards a business focus for photographers. And you watch the little instructional video, you record a two minute video or less, upload it into a private Facebook group, and I'll give you feedback and help with your video. And you'll find that after three weeks, it becomes totally natural, super easy. You do it in one take, warts and all, and video just becomes a, a natural part of your, your marketing or your business life. So we've got five of those to give away, Nicole. Oh, I love it. I love it. And what you said too, that by the end of the three weeks, like at the beginning, you're like, oh, delete, start again, delete, start again. By the end of like, even after probably a week and a half, you're like, okay, whatever, that one's good. Yeah. Um, and, <laughs> and you just get so much more comfortable just by doing it. Yeah. So yeah, 
So what did we say? Three videos. They have to give us proof of three videos. Yeah. And they can be any. Okay. They can be email replies. They can be testimonials from vendors. They can be on your social media. They could be ads. They could be on your website, whatever. Perfect. And they okay. have to be new videos, guys. Oh, so it's yeah. not something that you're pulling from the past. All right. So this podcast, it's December 22nd, 2020. If you guys are listening to this on the day of its release, we are going to give you until January 15th to record three new videos. So it can be an inquiry video. It can be putting something on your about page. It can be putting something else on your website. It can be some social media snippets, you know, meeting those dogs at the park, uh, tagging some vendors. Oh my gosh, you guys, if you don't have three ideas from listening to this podcast, go back and start again, because (laughs) there are so many ideas in here. And all you have to do by the end of the day on January 15th, is upload proof, just a screenshot of those three videos on the form. And it's www.hairofthedogacademy.com forward slash vlog challenge. So the letter V is in Victor, L-O-G challenge, all one word, vlog challenge. Um, Hairofthedogacademy.com slash vlog challenge. January 15th, five people are going to win a free seat in Andrew's daily video challenge. And it's going to be awesome. I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be fun. I love it. I love it. That's awesome. So yeah. So how else, Andrew, can people find you? And you know, what? where can they continue to learn all the amazing business goodness from you. <laughs> <laughs> you Look, the, there's two places. The, the easiest one is photobizx.com. So it's photobizx.com. That's where you'll see all the interviews with people, amazing people like you, Nicole. And uh, if people want to check out the Daily Vlog Challenge, they can go to dailyvlogchallenge.com, dailyvlogchallenge.com. I love it. I love it. So you guys definitely check that out. And the Photo Biz Podcast is one of my favorites. It is the best business, photography business podcast that I've heard. Shh, don't tell anyone else. <laughs> <laughs> so good. <laughs> Thanks again, Andrew, for being here with us. We really appreciate you taking the time and dropping some mad video knowledge on everybody. And I can't wait to see what everybody does with this. Thanks, Nicole. It's been a real pleasure. See you guys all next week. Thanks for listening to this episode of Hair of the Dog podcast. If you enjoyed this show, please take a minute to leave a review. And while you're there, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss our upcoming episodes. One last thing. If you are ready to dive into more resources, head over to our website at www.hairofthedogacademy.com. Thanks for being a part of this pet photography community.